We've actually um, uh, helped to foster 41 FDA-approved new breakthrough treatments for cancer, diabetes, and even vision loss. Those men who ate two to three servings of cooked tomatoes per week had a 30, up to a 30% reduction in the risk of developing prostate cancer, which depends upon angiogenesis. Now, what are the things that we know about dietary risk? We know that we're not eating enough nuts and seeds, fruits and vegetables, uh, low in omega-3 fatty acids, and we're eating too many processed foods like red meat and processed meats, and of course, uh, sugar-sweetened beverages. But that doesn't mean that this is the solution to health. Um, the solution is really coming out of economic drivers. So this is about two and a half trillion dollars of uh, burden that um, is attributed to some of these dietary risks. Diet isn't the full cause to these. There's uh, lots of other uh, things we've talked about, epigenetics, genetic uh, factors. There's other lifestyle issues, um, uh, stress, social issues that actually are uh, determinants of uh, health and disease as well. But I do think that we have to start here to take a look at what we can actually do about it. Now, different states now actually have food as medicine programs. Now, even though most of us here said, well, we're not really sure what that means, I can tell you that it's starting to be legislated. Uh, even insurance companies actually are beginning to talk about, you know, cancer protection in a bag. And so the vernacular of food as medicine is now actually starting to reach um, uh, the public and corporations. And it's also on Capitol Hill. There was a bipartisan announcement of the formation of a food as medicine working group within the Hunger Caucus that is now actually uh, meeting to talk about this issue uh, as well. And then finally, even the Vatican has gotten involved. This is actually from a conference that I um, uh, gave an address at talking about uh, uh, using diet to mobilize our defenses against the disease and a degrading environment. And so you can kind of see this is no longer really a bunch of extremists talking about vegan diets and at the salad bar. We're really talking about a kind of a global awakening. And that's really what I want to uh, share with you is that this global awakening is going to drive things into the future. So what does that mean? Does that mean that we all just go to the veggie counter at the Whole Foods to be able to get um, a plate full of healthy foods? This is actually what most people think about as food as medicine. Let's, let's get rid of all the bad stuff. Let's pile up a bowl and let's go ahead and munch down. But if you think about it, this is a solution, but it's not the whole solution. And it can't be because there's a lot of science that is still unknown uh, that still needs to be unraveled about what it is about food. I mean, are there superfoods? Is there a super supplement? Probably not. There are no super drugs either. Uh, what we know is that the body actually is very complex and actually uh, uh, responds to foods on an individual as well as a systemic level in ways that we barely understand. So tomatoes actually have a lot of carotenoids, one of which is lycopene. Well, lycopene inhibits angiogenesis in that red aortic ring assay, which I showed you earlier. Well, that's pretty cool. What could that actually possibly be useful for? Let's, let's jump back to the human studies. This is actually the health professionals follow-up study of 46,000 men, and it found that those men who ate two to three servings of cooked tomatoes per week had a 30, up to a 30% reduction in the risk of developing prostate cancer, which depends upon angiogenesis. And in fact, those men who did develop prostate cancer, when they looked deeply in the, tu in the tumor, this is molecular pathology, they actually found that the men who ate more uh, cooked tomato sauce actually had less, um, uh, fewer blood vessels. And also, they also found that the tumors were less aggressive as well. And then and the other question, question is dose. dose. What's the best dose, right? Like, what, or what, what's the best source of lycopene? Well, it turns out not all tomatoes were equal. This is actually four types of tomatoes. Have you ever gone into the farmer's market or the grocery store in the summer and you saw all these different types of tomatoes? Wouldn't you want to know which one is the most potent? Well, I, I do, do. And, and this, this is why, why we started, started to take, take a look, look at which the li relative, relative lycopene levels of different tomatoes. And these are just four of the cultivars or varietals that actually have the highest levels. Um, by the way, why do you have to cook the tomatoes? Because the tom lycopene coming off of a, vi the vine, a tomato on a vine is actually in a chemical conformation your body can't absorb. When you heat it, the ideal way of heating is with olive oil, okay, not to boiling temperature, but simmering. So now think about Mediterranean cuisine you change the chemical conformation into a form the body can absorb. So that makes a lot of sense. And we know that stem cells are called into action after injury. We know that the worse the injury, the more the stem cells uh, respond. 
We also know that aging slows down our stem cells. We heard about aging uh, the, the other day. day. And, and we, we also know that if you actually have lower stem cells, your chances of actually having a negative outcome of cardiovascular disease are worse. So what could you actually do to stimulate this besides going into clinical trials? Well, what about cacao? Studies have been done looking at chocolate, dark chocolate, cacao, the polyphenols. And in fact, they've actually studied this um, by looking at 60-year-old men with cardiovascular disease and feeding them high polyphenol cacao. And a month later, you could double the amount of circulating stem cells in your circulation. It's not the final answer, but it's an amazing point that you can actually do it. And they've studied this with larger numbers of people looking at lowering the incidence of, of heart disease as well. Omega-3 fatty acids also uh, can increase the activity of, of stem cells. A lot of these um, medications can stimulate. What about cancer stem cells? This is one of the most amazing things to me because there is it's a holy grail to find something that can kill a cancer stem cell, uh, which actually helps um, uh, tumors recur. Well, it turns out that there are foods that inhibit cancer stem cells. And one of them, in fact, is the walnut. And, and this, this is a study from that was presented at ASCO, the American Society of Clinical Oncology, in which they looked at 800 patients with phase, uh, stage three colon cancer getting regular treatment, chemotherapy, and then found that those who ate two or more servings of tree nuts a week, including walnuts, had a 50%, 53% improvement in survival and a 66% reduction in cancer recurrence after surgery. Here are things that are some surprises. Kiwi fruit is prebiotic. When you actually do small pilot studies you can and give female volunteers kiwi fruit, you increase their beneficial bacteria um, by 30% in the first day, another type uh, over the course of about four days. These are the foods that you can actually eat to actually consume bacteria. I'm not going to go into that in detail. And sourdough bread actually uh, also contains uh, a lactobacillus ruteri that is used to make the dough sour. Now, what's really amazing is that this same bacteria used for sourdough can inhibit the growth of breast cancer. And the activity of lactobacillus doesn't require live bacteria. You fragment them and sonicate them, the particles will actually have the same effect. This is actually showing a, a mouse study with a healthy diet and breast tumors a fast food diet speeds up the growth of, of breast cancer, but then you add the probiotic lactobacillus ruteri in the drinking water and let them eat a fast food diet, you decrease the risk, you decrease the, the, the growth, the speed of breast cancer growth. A lot of foods affect the microbiome. I'm sure many of you will be asking that same question. It's like, why do we get sick? What, if we can figure that answer. I want to tell you how I turned, I upended that entire concept because I ask a different question now. I ask, why don't we get sick more often. Why don't we get sick more often? How come kids don't get sick seriously ill more often? How come when we're young adults in our 20s, how come we don't develop, you know, the huge burden of diseases like cancer and diabetes and heart disease more often? How come we don't develop these diseases until later in life? Well, asking that question inverts the entire thought process. If we knew why we don't get sick more often, then we can support those systems that keep us healthy. And so this is what I'm actually telling you. I've spent more than a decade studying this. And it, I've, what I've figured out is our body is hardwired. We are hardwired with five health defense systems that we're born with. Actually, they start forming when we're in our mom's womb. When we're born, these health defense systems are inside our body, hardwired, firing in all cylinders from day one, from the day we're born until our very last breath. And how well these systems perform really is is what matters in terms of whether or not we stay healthy or we uh, stumble and might get sick. And usually these health defense systems help us regain our health again. And so the question is, how can how long can we extend this? How do we support and boost these health defenses so that when we're in our vulnerable periods of our life, that we can actually minimize the risk? And, uh, and what's really cool is that some of these health defense systems can even reverse diseases as well. So let me tell you what we've discovered these five health defense systems. Angiogenesis, which is how the body grows blood vessels. We've got 60,000 miles worth of blood vessels. I'm going to tell you about those. Regeneration, our stem cells inside our bone marrow and it's circulating our blood. It's another health defense system. Our microbiome, many of you will heard about, uh, have heard about gut health. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how gut health and food works together. Our DNA, most people think of our DNA as our genetic code and it is our genetic code but that's kind of a concept that we figured out you know let's see almost 50 years ago now so what are we thinking about our dna now what's the state of the art thinking our dna protects us from the environment and then our immunity our immune system is more powerful than we ever thought so powerful in fact that if we had cancer 
our immune system can wipe it out, even if the cancer is spread. So, you know, th this is coming from really the front leading edges, the edge of the envelope of science. Each of these defense systems, there is some biotech or pharmaceutical company working on them to develop some drugs. I will tell you that Mother Nature has beat drug companies to the punch because there are tons of foods, more than 200 foods that are right about my book, Eat to Beat Disease, that actually have the ability, proven ability through science and research to activate our health defenses. So what are some of the things that can activate the immune system besides drugs? I mean, there's a lot of things that can actually help our immune system, but food, you know, is really a pretty powerful way to enhance it. We talked a little bit about earlier about kimchi boosting our immune system through the microbiome, but there are foods that just can actually automatically boost our immune system by themselves. One of them is mango. You know, I love mangoes. They're juicy, sweet, filled with fiber. They got lots of vitamins and they also have bioactives. And, and I call a mango, by the way, a mango is a stone fruit, but I call mangoes and stone fruit grand slammers of foods. These are foods, a whole table of foods I have in my book that all activate all five um, uh, defense systems at the same time, including the immune system. So you can slam it out of the park by eating these foods. Mango is one of my favorites. Tasty, juicy, sweet. You get vitamins, good minerals, and it actually contains these natural bioactives that actually can help boost your immune system. But it's not just mangoes. You got other things. Um, broccoli sprouts. You know, some people talk about um, living foods, right? Those are the young sprouting foods that have all the nutrients and the energy when they're just young babies. And later on, when they get older, they get distributed the energy on, on the whole bigger plant. Well, it turns out that broccoli sprouts have been studied to see if they can boost the immune system. And in my book, I talk about a research study where they gave young people in their 20s the flu shot. Actually, it's not a shot. They gave a flu in inhaler to protect them against the flu. And it turns out that if they gave them also a couple of shots of a of broccoli sprouts made into a smoothie, that's it. A couple of shots of this a day that you would actually improve the response like 20 times to the benefit protecting you against the flu. Boost your immune system. And when they even swabbed their noses afterwards, you know, where the flu virus might live, they were like almost all gone. And so again, this is an example of a food that can boost up the immune response that we want to have to protect ourselves. So, you know, you go to the doctor, you get a flu shot, but you know, what about having a, a smoothie made with broccoli sprouts as well? Final food I want to talk about is really mushrooms. So, you know, some people love mushrooms, some people don't, but everybody should love them because number one, they grow right from the ground. They, they suck up all those really nice nutrients from the ground. If, you're, if it's growing in clean ground, we've got to protect our earth, we have a good planet so that our food is really safe. But inside the mushroom, there is a natural compound called beta-glucan, beta-glucan that is found in the cap of the mushroom that we cut up, right, and eat. And that stimulates the immune system directly. But here's a, here's a real surprise. Regardless of whether it's a shiitake mushroom, a maitake mushroom, a portobello mushroom, or even the lowly white button mushroom, but researchers have found that the stems called the stipe actually uh, contains up to three times more beta-glucan than the cap. Cap is good, stem is better. Next time you eat mushrooms, eat them both. My recommendation is take you know only about a third of what your brain tells you to take put it on your plate enjoy what you're eating choose the right things and lean into the foods that you love